Hi, it's Hopkey, and welcome to the screencast looking at how to add and use the new variable tracks to the animation panel. Now, in version 5, we had a separate um, animation editor. In version 6, we have an animation panel. If I click the animation um, button up here, you'll see that we have the panel open. I'm just going to increase the size to give us a bit more real estate so we can see what's going on. I've already set um, a, a simple animation. If I click the play, you'll see that the viewer now in version 6 becomes the preview of the animation. And there we go. And that's my simple animation. Now, things to note as well is in version 6, if you go to the toolbar and click uh, animation, you can see that we can actually also choose frame overlays to see what the window will look like or what the animation will look like in different aspect ratios. So if I was going to export this as an MPEG-4 to go into something like YouTube with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, you can see what it's actually going to look like. As I'm not going to do that, and this is going to be an animation as used as an auto-rotate, I don't need it, so I'm going to set that to none. You could also set um, color overlays, so where I've got a gray background, I could set black and various other colors as well. Anyway, so that's my project. I also have a skin um, that, if I open it up, you'll see it has two buttons. Um, I've got a play uh, button, that's will, and it has the action of play animation. And the... Um, stop button that also has the action of stop auto rotate which would also stop my animation okay so if i just publish this to see what it looks like when i set the or click the play animation the timeline starts and when it hits to a certain keyframe we then start getting the pan zoom and field of you know the pan tilt and field of view there you go and this project is going to keep on looping until i click stop okay so let's go back to pano 2 vr and how do we add these tracks? Well, I can add the new variable track by clicking Animation, Add Track New, or I can right button click in any of the existing timelines and Add Track New here, okay? So this is gonna open up an Add Track uh, dialog box. Now this is gonna be a variable, so I'm gonna call this one um, Title, okay? And the variable name is gonna be Set Underscore Text, and it is going to be a text variable. When I click OK, we add the variable track. Now, to give myself a bit, uh, uh, to actually give myself a bit more space, I'm going to right button click in in any of the tracks, and I'm going to hide projections track. So that just gives me a bit more space here. Okay, so this is the uh, title. Now it's a text variable, so I can type in text directly into the timeline. So. At this point in the timeline, I want to say welcome. So I'm gonna double click and add a keyframe and I'm gonna set the value to welcome. There we go. And I'm gonna carry on saying welcome until we start to move. So at this point in the timeline, I'm gonna double click, add another keyframe, but I'm gonna keep it blank. All right. And I'm gonna, at this point in the timeline, all right, I want to add another word and I'm gonna say Cinema Club, all right, because that's what we're looking at. And I'm going to keep saying that until we start to move away. So again, double click in the timeline and add another value or blank value. OK, so that's um, the variable or, or the text variable added in the animation timeline. If I click the skin editor, You'll see the skin editor opens, but more notably, it's got it's saying it's telling me that there's animation variables, but these aren't in the skin. If you hover over the blue icon, it tells you that these aren't in the skin, and what you have to do is select the variable and add variable to the skin. So we click that, and now the variable is part of the skin as well. So now what I can do is add a text box. I'm going to um, anchor it top middle. I'm going to set its position to zero so it's in the middle of the skin and say 10 pixels down. And then I'm gonna uh, add some attributes to the text box just to make it look a little bit better. So I'm gonna give it um, a radius of 10 to bend the edges. I'm gonna give it uh, auto sizing and I'm going to do some padding. So uh, top bottom padding is two pixels and side to side four pixels. Okay, now this is the clever bit. If I highlight and delete the word text, I have our button here, which is our insert placeholder. 
um, we now can insert a placeholder to to access the variable um, and the variable here is our sex, uh, set text variable so I click that so what's going to happen now is when the timeline moves and we get to the word welcome it will display that in the text box so if I close and publish this this is what we should see so initially we see a, the text box that's small because we've auto sizing and when I click play it will says welcome we then move and zoom in it says cinema club and again I'm just going to stop that right so that's that's working as I wanted but the problem there is the text box is always visible and when there's no text there you see this little blob at the top of the screen so what I can do is go back to the um, skin editor select the text box I'm just going to give it a better title so I can identify it better in the skins tree so let's just call it title text well what I'm going to do is deselect its visible and under the visible logic block I'm going to get the variables trigger set text now this is the clever bit what I'm going to do the the common denominator here is empty so if I was going to do set text equals welcome I can then do false so when it says welcome we display the text box but it wouldn't display when it says cinema club so what I'm going to say is when the trigger set text doesn't equal a blank show the text box so when it's empty i.e. it's blank it's hidden but when it's not empty i.e. it's got a word in there then it will become visible okay so if we publish this and have a look this is what should happen so there's no text box we play the animation or press play there's the welcome text and when we zoom in there is our cinema text okay so that's all working as I want okay so let's go back to Pano 2 VR um, the next thing I'm going to do is add another variable track um, as I've already added one variable track I can actually go back in and edit it or remove it I can also hide that additional variable track and also show the projections track back again but I'm going to add a new track this time round um, I'm going to call this picture and I'm going to have the variable name uh, in the skin called viz underscore pick and this is going to be a true false variable basically I'm going to show and hide a picture so it's either true or false okay click OK it adds the new track to the timeline at this point um, let me think right oh so when I'm saying cinema club I want to see a picture so I'm going to double click and add the keyframe and set the keyframe to true all right and at this point when we move away I want the picture to hide so I'm going to double click add the keyframe and have the value at false okay so with that said I'm going to open up the skin editor and I'm just going to go and get the picture to add so let's do that and I'm going to click on a camera come back to panel 2 VR and dump that in the skin uh, just resize that if I hold down shift and drag I can resize it keeping its aspect ratio it's anchored top left I'm going to deselect visible and I'm going to use its logic block to say when the variable set text where's my variable gone the variables not there because when I click in the skin I didn't add the viz pick variable to the skin if I add it to the skin now when I go back and go to the visible logic block you'll see that vizpick is now available to use okay so now when vizpick equals true I want to see the the picture so that's going to be true so if I close save and publish this this is exactly what we should get so if I click animation you'll see the text box but when we zoom in we will also see the picture there we go so that's that so you can now do pop-ups and all sorts okay right so let's go back um, when I do something else I want to do something uh, pretty clever this time around I'm going to add some audio tracks so I'm just going to go back to my folder grab an audio track uh, welcome and go back to Pano 2 VR you'll see it's got an ID I can over type that but I'm going to leave it as saying element 01 if I click the play welcome to the guilt tea rooms that's what it says um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that as a static sound and I need to set the loop to minus one 
Otherwise, the audio clip will play as soon as the project opens. All right. So I'm just now going to go and get a second audio clip. Um, this one. Take that back to Pano 2 VR. Do the same. This is now Element 2. Again, I could overwrite it when I press. Play. Tonight is Cinema Club Night. And that's what the audio clip sounds like. Right. So again, I'm going to make it static and set the loop to minus one. All right. Cool. Okay, so now I've got some audio clips. What I'm going to do is right button click in the timeline and add a track, a new track. I'm going to call this audio just to be original and we're going to call it play underscore audio as a variable name. I mean, you could type in any names or any descriptions, but this is what I'm choosing. I'm going to leave its type as number. Okay, right, so here is my audio uh, variable track. It's a numbered track. At this point, when we sh see the word welcome, I'm going to double click and add the value 1 at this keyframe. And then when we get to the cinema um, text, when that shows, I'm going to double click and add a keyframe here and call that 2. Okay, okay I'm now going to go back to the skin. And what we're going to do is, now what I'm going to do, I could actually add to any element that's in the skin, but to make things nice and clear, I'm going to grab a container, so draw container, add it to the skin. I'm going to call the container play audio. And now I'm going to give it an action. Now I'm going to show you a new source, and the source is variable changed. Okay, And the variable we're going to change, which I can't, because I haven't added it to the skin. If I click the skin, play audio, set that to add to the uh, play audio variable to the skin. Now I can access that. So again, it's going to be variable changed. There's my play audio variable. The action is going to be media, play media once, and the target is going to be element 01. So that's my welcome audio. I'm going to copy this and paste it in again open up um, the action and change the element it's going to play to 02. So it's audio track 2. So let's just run through this. If I move the skin up a little bit, as the timeline moves, it starts off here. And at this point, we are going to detect a variable change. And at that point, when, the, when we detect a variable change, we're going to be playing media element 01 and 02 both together. Now they only last for a couple of seconds and we'll stop and the time we get to this point we're going to detect another variable change and it's going to play both of the audio clips again. But what we're going to do is open up the first action and I'm going to add an action filter. So if I click this what I'm going to say is when variable play audio equals one then that's when you can play the audio clip element 01. All right. Then on the second action, add another action filter, which is when the variable play audio equals two, you can play this audio clip. Okay, so you can see what's going on. So start off, when we hit this point, we get a variable changed. When the variable equals one, we play the welcome and nothing else. At this point, we get another variable changed and the, and the action filter says when it's two, only play the element 02 audio clip. There we go, so that's what's going on. So let's just say, okay, close and see what this looks like. I'm gonna play the animation, click. Welcome to the Guilt Tea Rooms. Tonight is Cinema Club Night. And there you go, that's the animation running with the audio clips and the pictures picking, uh, popping up. Now the thing is, this is looping. And I said before, if I click the play button, you'll see that it resets. Welcome to the Guilt Tea Rooms. Tonight is Cinema Club Night. Then it's going to reset, go back to the start. Welcome to the Guilt Tea Rooms. And play again. So I'm going to click stop. How do we stop that? Right, well, if I go back to the um, animation timeline, I've got the audio one, which is a numbered variable. I can use this to control the auto rotate in the skin. So if I open up the skin editor and look at my um, container, 
I'm going to give it another action, which is when variable changed, play audio, I'm going to ask it to auto rotate, stop auto rotate. Okay, so at the moment, as soon as we hit the one, that's the first variable change, it's going to stop the auto rotate at that point, which I don't want it to do. So I'm going to add another action filter and say when the play audio equals zero, that's when you can stop auto rotate. So let's follow this through. From the start, it hits this one. We, we detect a variable change one. We play audio clip one. At this point, we detect another variable change number two. So we play audio clip two. And when we loop, we detect another variable change going back to zero. And when we do, we are going to stop auto rotate. There you go. So if I click close, save, publish and play, that's exactly what should happen. So let's click play animation. Welcome to the Guilt Tea Rooms. Tonight is Cinema Club Night. And that's where it stops. So there you go. That's how to use and add variable um, tracks to the animation panel. And as always, thanks for watching.